Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of the Boca ARPA webinar series. Our goal for part three is to address any remaining questions around Boca ARPA reporting, and then we will follow up this recorded session with a live Q&A. So please be on the lookout for an opportunity to both register and submit questions ahead of time. Today's focus will be on VOCA ARPA reporting, budget modifications, and then an update on future funding levels in Wisconsin. My name is Teresa Nino, and I'm the Director of Grant Programs and Training for the Office of Crime Victim Services, Wisconsin Department of Justice. Um, you may hear us refer to our office as OCVS. Presenting today is the OCVS Grants and Training Team. Please feel free to reach out to your grant manager or financial grant specialist with any remaining questions after viewing this webinar. Today, we are going to build upon educational opportunities previously offered by OCVS. So please go ahead and refer to already released and recorded webinars, Q and A's and FAQs if you have any questions. During part three, we're going to share information about fiscal reports a new subrecipient spending report. And this is a report that will be released by OCVS, not an additional report for our subrecipients to do. We have a new excessive term back policy that we'll be talking about, and then an OVC PMT reminder. Additionally, we'll have some reminders about submitting modifications. And then lastly, a federal funding level update. I am now going to pass to my colleague, Justin, and he is going to talk about VOCA ARPA reporting. Hi, everybody. I'm Justin Wartsnoff. I am the Victim Services Grant Supervisor here in OCVS. As Teresa said, I'll be talking about various reporting things and ARPA updates and modifications. So I might be jumping around from brief topics here and there. So just a heads up that it might feel a bit sporadic. Starting from left, going to the right, a few reminders in relation to fiscal reports. A quick reminder that when you're certifying a fiscal report, you can no longer edit it after that. So make sure that everything you've entered and submitted is true and correct to the best of your ability and knowledge. This will help avoid any errors or potential refunds owed back to OCVS. In the past year, we have had an update to our state rates, the amount of reimbursement you can receive for meals as well as hotels while traveling or training has increased, but it still does not match the federal reimbursement rates. We have those posted on our website and we can send those around with these training resources. Another quick reminder about time and effort as well as an upcoming training that we will have. Ensure that staff is providing time and actual time and effort reporting on their time sheets and when you're calculating payroll and how much gets charged to our grant. Next, we have a quick clarification and reminder about unauthorized expenses versus unallowable expenses. Sometimes an expense might be allowable under our grant, and you might have had it in the past, for example, emergency fund or charging rent. But if it is not in your budget, you cannot charge it to our grant. It would be considered an unauthorized expense, even though it's generally allowable under our programs. In order to avoid the, these errors, please make sure to keep your budgets updated and that you have official approval from our office on any expenses. Official approval is considered to be your most recent approved budget or modification that you should have received from our office. If you're unsure what the most recent one is, please reach out to us and we can provide that to you. And lastly, if you have any questions or need any technical assistance when filling out fiscal reports, please contact your grant manager and your financial grant specialist. Both of them review and approve the report internally, so either of them can hopefully assist you in whatever issues you're running into. Next, I want to talk briefly about a new subrecipient spending report. As Teresa stated earlier, this is not a new report that you have to fill out. It is a report that we are providing to you all to help you better track your ARPA spending throughout the life of the grants. This will be in two different places. The first place will be in your approved fiscal reports. So once we have reviewed and approved the fiscal report in eGrants, we will attach an Excel spreadsheet showing what your ARPA spending is for each line item. At the end of each quarter, we will also send out a summary showing for each line item how much you have spent towards ARPA funds. Uh, we're doing this to hopefully ensure that you can periodically check throughout the year that what you have on your end tracked for ARPA reporting matches what, what we have. If there are any discrepancies 
or if you have any questions about the report, please contact us so we can resolve any of those issues. We also have a new excessive turnback policy posted on our website. The purpose of this policy is to help aid in our planning and distribution of our funds throughout the state. After the close of each grant, we will send a letter detailing the dollar amount as well as the percentage of the award that was turned back to OCVS. We're doing this in hopes to give you all a better understanding and to check how well you are spending down your grants. Excessive turnback we have defined as more than 20% of your award or more than 20% of the average award amount for that grant cycle. Those that have been deemed to have excessive turnback will have additional monitoring provided by OCVS. After you have read our policy, if you have any questions, please reach out. We're happy to aid in any concerns that may arise. Next, I'll be passing it off to Ashley, one of our newer grant managers, to talk about OVC PMT reporting and how it relates to ARPA, as well as a few quick reminders. Thank you, Justin. I am Ashley Wallach. I am new to OCVS. I come to OCVS with many years of experience in a nonprofit providing services to domestic violence and sexual assault victims and also had a shelter. So I'm familiar with reporting on PMTs from an agency perspective, but we also utilize OSIUM so I can help making OSIUM kind of unique for your agency with the services and material assistance you are providing. Um, these changes can be customized from your OSIUM administrator login. So if you have that and have questions, please feel free to reach out to our office. PMTs are used to gather information of the services you are providing and needs to be entered quarterly. And this is going to be only entered on your VOCA funding, not on ARPA. So this is only VOCA that will be reflected in your data entry um, for this year. And moving forward, as long as we have the ARPA funding. And next, so you're going to want to track data. Um, data can be used to track whether it's a spreadsheet, Osseum, Apricot, any other software that you have that you are using to track and get this information correctly. So we will be sending out a handout, which includes a scenario and kind of steps of a walkthrough of what a PMT might look like. So that will be coming to you via email. Um, and then as we get processed after this webinar, we'll have a live Q&A and you can also utilize that to ask questions. So first off on the PMTs, so you're going to ask for demographics and all of this information needs to be self-reported from the victims or survivors themselves. So using this, it's best practice to gather information by using uh, intake paperwork that they can fill in the line. Fill in the blank. So what this does is allows the victim to self-identify their race, gender identity, age, and also there's like a special class. Um, and that includes individual self-reporting, whether they're deaf, hard of hearing, homeless, immigrant, LGBTQ, veterans, victims with disability, and also the victim limited English proficiency. That I'm going to add as a key thing. And so victims who are not speaking English need to be tracked in the PMTs as well. And this is going to help us gather information of other languages that are out there that we are providing services to. So next off of that, we will jump into the victimization types. So advocates will have to kind of choose what victimization types there is, or if you have it on your intake paperwork, victims can self-identify. They may have multiple victimizations. It could be domestic violence or family violence, also stalking or harassment, and also adult sexual assault. So if any of those the victim has experienced, those need to be checked and tracked into the PMT data. Direct client services. What this is, is when advocates are meeting with victims and survivors and they're receiving services, each activity needs to be tracked. By that, I mean, so if an advocate's meeting for one hour with a victim and they go over safety planning, they talk about a restraining order or the criminal justice system, it could be asking for gas vouchers, gift cards. So if you're doing any of those things, it needs to be tracked each one separately. So you could have multiple activities that you are doing in that meeting, and that's what we are asking you guys to track. Um, other ways to kind of for executive directors to ensure that reporting is being done correctly, accurately, kind of throughout the agency, you want to ensure that they're tracking similarly or the same way. Um, so in order to help this, you might want to run reports for regular staff meetings, whether that's weekly, monthly meetings, 
you may want to consider checking those reports and for that data more frequency than like just that one quarter because then this is going to allow advocates time to make those corrections add any additional services that they may have missed double checking if you have anything else such as gift card tracking so if you have a spreadsheet of how many gift cards you have given away to a person then you can track that whether it is a spreadsheet just so you can double check the numbers from the osseum data or whatever software you're using to that gift card tracking data that you may use um, so reach out to us if you have any questions about voca pmc how However, I will say that we are planning a more in-depth webinar training or in-person meeting about VOCA PNTs. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We can give out some handouts that we're still working on, but more information will be coming on this. And now I'll pass it back to Justin to talk about VOCA ARPA modifications. Thank you, Ashley. So similar to the fiscal reporting slide from earlier, we're gonna go from left to right. A quick, a few quick reminders related to ARPA. As we stated in our funding announcement, all line items that are to be funded by ARPA or expenses to be funded by ARPA should start in your budget and e-grants with an ARPA and then a colon. The reason that we're doing a colon instead of other punctuation is just because of uh, e-grants limitations. It helps us with our reporting to help easier, more easily grab that information. So ensure that you're, if you're doing any changes and modifications related to ARPA, that they start with ARPA colon. Uh, if not, we'll try to catch them as well. Another reminder, when you're doing modifications moving forward, since all of our VOCA grants have ARPA, is to double check your VOCA ARPA funding split. If you're moving funds in between categories, especially, it might be a little harder to track. And by that, we mean you have a set uh, award amount and that is funded by VOCA and ARPA, make sure that the portion or the dollar amount that is ARPA and the portion that is VOCA stays that throughout the life of the grants. Uh, if at any point you do want to turn back funds or lower your award, please let us know. We can work with you on that. But for all other cases, please make sure that the amount that is funded by VOCA and ARPA stays the same. If you're doing any edits in your budget to, through a modification to personnel benefits or indirect, try to make sure that what's funded by VOCA and what's funded by ARPA are linked. So by that, we mean personnel expenses. So if someone's funded by VOCA, that their benefits should also be funded by VOCA and not ARPA and vice versa. And then for indirect, we mean that in your indirect calculations, make sure that you don't have any ARPA funds or line items in there if it's for VOCA expenses. So if you have indirect, most likely you already have two line items, one for VOCA direct expenses and one for ARPA direct expenses. So if you're doing any adjustments, uh, try to make sure that those calculations are accurate. And then lastly, with modifications, as always, make sure that your justification is thorough. This will help us ensure that we can process your request and we understand your request. In the past, we used to require a full SAM.gov registration. That is no longer the case for our federal awards. You do have to have a UEI and you do get that through SAM.gov, but if your registration in SAM.gov lapses, that's okay. This requirement does pass down to any subcontracts or subawards you may have, so they also would have to have a unique entity identifier or a UEI in order to receive those federal funds. They also have to not be debarred from receiving federal funds. You can check that on SAM.gov as well. They have job aids on how to check that, and we can also provide some tips. Now I'm going to be passing it back to Teresa to close us out by talking about federal funding levels. Thank you very much, Justin. So I want to start off by providing a description of the chart that you see on your screen. So starting on the very left hand side, you will see the federal fiscal year award. And this is the year that Wisconsin receives our federal fiscal award for VOCA. The very next column over is the award amount. So that is the amount that Wisconsin receives to support victim services across the state for that federal fiscal year. Now, if you look at the middle column, this is our 5% administrative fund. And so OCBS is allocated 5% of the federal award to responsibly administer federal funds across the state. And you'll notice in the very next column that we don't always spend our full 5%. So of course, we are always considering fiscal responsibility 
and ensuring that our spending is within the limits and under the limits whenever possible. And then if you look at the very last column, you'll see the award period. And simply, this is the amount of time that OCVS has to spend that federal fiscal year award. And so I'll draw your attention to 2019. So if you'll see there, there is a to be determined under the amount that we spent on our administrative cost. The reason that that is, is because we had from October 1, 2018 until this year, September 30th, 2023, to spend our federal 2019 award. So we don't know the exact amount of administrative funds that we will spend. We do have some projections and we do project to come in at under 5%. But we don't have that number yet, and that's why you'll see to be determined from 2019 to our most recent award, which was 2022. So a couple common questions that we're all wondering the answers to are what's going to happen with VOCA funding levels, and then what happens with VOCA after ARPA funding is no longer available? OCVS has worked on some preliminary projections and optimistically, we believe that future funding will look similar to what we saw in 2021. So if you take a look at the chart, in 2021, our federal fiscal award was around $18 million. And of course, this is subject to change, but if as predicted, our next competitive in 2024 will look very different than what we saw in 2019. And just as a reminder, in 2019, OCBS was able to award around $44.5 million. So unfortunately, we're looking at less than half available within our next competitive. And then just as another reminder, VOCA is awarded to all 50 states and applicable territories by a formula grant. And so this means that we're unable to request additional funding, unfortunately. So that federal formula determines how much Wisconsin gets, and then we administer those funds that are given to the state for victim services. So due to this swift reduction in the federal VOCA award, OCVS is experiencing unprecedented budget considerations. So for example, even with the ARPA funds received to help supplement VOCA reductions in years four and five of this current VOCA grant cycle, OCVS still had to rely on all of our turn back to make our awards for 2022-2023. We've talked internally and come up with a couple of ways to address this and really to ensure that we're able to continuing funding, not only in this current cycle, but going into the competitive in 2024. So as Justin mentioned, we have our new excessive turn back policy. This will allow us to better track turn back and then utilize it as needed to continue supporting our programs. We also will take modifications into consideration, but on a limited basis within this year four and year five of the VOCA funding cycle. So what that means is that, of course, modifications will be allowed. However, we will not be approving modifications if they are not required for the project. And the reason that is, is because we need turn back to ensure that we don't have to have additional funding cuts in year five of this cycle. So these practices, as mentioned, will help us better leverage our funding and really minimize the impact on programs across the state and hopefully get us through this funding cycle and then prepare us for our new competitive in 2024. Thinking about the future and the next competitive. We're still unsure what that's going to look like. We have to wait and see what our 23 and 24 awards are to make a more sound prediction. Um, we should be getting our 23 award within the next few months, and we will share that information with all of you as soon as we have it. Collectively, we really need to start preparing for funding reductions across the state, and OCBS strives to be good partners with all of you. So please continue to reach out with questions and concerns. We're happy to talk through any of that so we can all remain on the same page. And then we will continue to do our part in being transparent and sharing updates as soon as we have them. Thank you everyone so much for your time and attention today. 
OCVS will host a live Q&A after this session, as mentioned, and you will have an opportunity to both register and submit questions ahead of time. Please take care and thank you for everything you do.